Okay, this morning I'm going to talk a little bit about feet and our shoes and something called plantar fasciitis. Now, this is an area where I actually have a little bit of expertise. So, um, unlike uh, my uh, when I'm talking about my hiking gear and through hiking, um, I'm relatively uh, new to the uh, whole idea of through hiking. So uh, that's why I refer to myself as Goofy Bill because um, you're uh, sort of learning along with me when it comes to all this stuff specifically about uh, through hiking. But let me tell you, uh, I do know something about uh, feet and uh, footwear. Uh, and I'll tell you why before I get into these deta other details about our feet. Uh, oh, I... Many years ago, decided that I wanted to start running and I was a long distance runner. And, and uh, so consequently, I, I uh, started uh, learning about running shoes. But um, when I first started running, um, you, know, you think, oh, that's something. Shoot, anybody can do that. That's uh, not very expensive. Anybody can uh, go out and, and uh, you know, maybe buy a pair of running shoes. That might cost a little bit of money, but it's pretty cheap. Well, I found out uh, pretty quickly after I started getting uh, kind of serious about my running uh, and uh, that it's uh, not always uh, that cheap once you consider all of the other stuff in addition to the shoes. And the shoes themselves aren't that cheap. Uh, I, I realized one day... I even started taking some running uh, classes and things like that. So I added things up one day, and within uh, a year's time, I was spending like uh, $2,000 on uh, <laughs> my, my so-called uh, free uh, sport of running. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a little more expensive than just, uh, you know, getting up in the morning, lacing your shoes, and getting out there running. So I, um, the place where I was spending <laughs> this $2,000 over the last year, uh, I, uh, I thought, you know what, I need to get a part-time job there so that uh, I can um, get an employee discount and save a little bit of money on all, all these uh, expenses. So um, that's what I did, and that was, uh, <laughs> you know, that was uh, about 20 years ago, and, and so um, uh, now I only, it was just a part-time job, and I just worked on the weekends, but I did it for over 15 years, so uh, I learned a little bit about uh, feet and and shoes and things like plantar fasciitis. So uh, I do have a, a bit of expertise here. So um, I'm going to uh, set aside my humility when uh, I talk about this subject. So let's let's go ahead and uh, talk about our feet. Okay. So uh, before we uh, get into uh, talking about what's the right shoe for you. Um, Let's talk about our feet uh, a little bit. And uh, the first thing that I want to say when I start talking about feet is that um, everybody's foot is different. So um, that's the first thing uh, you want to do once you start thinking about a shoe and, and your foot health and stuff like that is, you know, what kind of foot do you have? And uh, <laughs> the biggest uh, distinction basically is um, regarding something called uh, pronation. And that's basically uh, refers to your, your biomechanics uh, as you're uh, walking or running and, um, or hiking. <laughs> and uh, um, basically pronation is that the motion of your foot, you, everybody has an arch. Some people, and this is where the differences begin, some people have a very low arch or a flat arch or a flat foot. Okay, uh, but everybody has some kind of an arch. Some people at the other extreme might have an extremely high arch, uh, like that. And uh, now, it's not so much how high or low your arch is that's important. It's what your arch is doing uh, and the rest of your foot, including your ankle, what all of that's doing as you're walking, running, or hiking. Uh, and basically, your arch is designed to absorb shock. So when you're, when you're walking along or hiking or running, um, it, it collapses. It works like a spring. Like the shocks in your car. Oh, look at though We got some, got some uh, ants on their little hike. One of them's carrying a little leaf one way. Okay. Oh, I love, I love, I love seeing the bugs. 
All right, sorry, sorry I got distracted. Uh, anyway, so um, it works like a, a shock. The, your your uh, arch is a shock absorber, like kind of like the shocks in your car. And, uh, and that, so it's a good thing. So your arch flexing a little bit is a good thing because that helps absorb shock. Now what happens for those people that are pronators, and there's degrees of pronation, what happens is a lot of times as that arch collapses, it also causes the foot to roll inward a little bit. And that's pronation. Okay, what's the problem with that? Well, what happens is, let me stop here for a minute and do a little, when your, when your arch collapses and your foot starts to roll in, what happens is, I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, let me tighten my pants so you can get a little better picture here. So if your foot starts to roll in, look what happens to your knee, okay? And then that affects what happens to your hips, okay? So, um, pronation can get your body out of alignment a little bit and ultimately cause injuries, not just in your foot, but in your knees and hips and, and even your back. So, so uh, pronation, now the uh, collapsing of your arch itself is, is not uh, necessarily a bad thing. In fact, it's a good thing because it absorbs shock. So um, whether you have a high arch or low arch, medium arch, whatever, um, you, want the, you want the arch to uh, be flexible and uh, to help absorb the shock. Now, some people, on the other hand, with, uh, and a lot of times they have a very high arch, um, but not necessarily, uh, a lot of people, their arch is actually very rigid and it doesn't really collapse that much. And that's, uh, so it's not absorbing much shock. So that, that can lead to problems as well. Uh, and also, a lot of times, people that have a, a very rigid foot like that, um, they actually do something called supernating, which means their foot actually rolls out a little bit, okay? So, uh, and that's not necessarily a good thing too, because just like with the pronation, supernation can get your body out of alignment a little bit and lead to injuries. So that's a, a quick little lesson about the uh, biomechanics of your foot and, and your whole body actually, when it comes to uh, walking, hiking, and, and uh, running. So uh, the good news is, is that uh, these days uh, the technology in, in shoes, especially running shoes and hiking shoes, uh, has uh, uh, developed so that uh, you can find a shoe that really is sort of made for you, that will address your specific uh, biomechanics and make you a happier, healthier walker, hiker, or runner, whatever that might be. Um, so. Uh, and I'm not going to go into a lot of the details uh, about the shoes, uh, but uh, that's sort of the first thing that you uh, look for in a shoe. A lot of times, in fact, when I was working part-time in, in this uh, running store, uh, I, uh, a lot of times people would come in and they would have said, uh, they would have talked to somebody and they would have, you know, maybe they their friend told them that, oh, Asics is the best shoe ever, or Brooks, or whatever. And then there's a lot of people that are just really brand loyal, you know, like the Nike people and the Adidas people. Those tend to be very brand loyal people. And they seem to think that, you know, that is the best shoe ever. They, they see, they see uh, people on TV, you know, running in a certain shoe. And so they think that that's the best shoe for them. Well, the bottom line is, it's not so much the brand. I mean, there are definitely are some brands that uh, I, I tend to prefer over, over others. Uh, but the, the more important thing is not that you get a brand that you think might be right for you, but you get the type of shoe that is right for you. And most of the major brands will carry shoes in all the different types, okay? So, uh, number one thing is, is getting that shoe that's going to address your specific uh, biomechanics. And then beyond that, it, it, it breaks down to your specific needs. And in the case of us, uh, hikers, if you're uh, going with a trail shoe, that's, uh, you know, you'll, you'll want a trail shoe as opposed to a road running shoe or, or uh, something like that. Um, now, some of you uh, might still be uh, wearing hiking boots. Uh, and that's fine. Uh, this, the, the thing that you need to know about hiking boots in general is, uh, well, first of all, they're probably going to be a bit heavier, but uh, if they're waterproof, they're Gore-Tex, uh, that'll be good 
when you get a little bit of water, but once they get soaked, that Gore-Tex does not dry very fast. So um, a, uh, a running shoe or trail shoe uh, is uh, made of, of a material uh, the upper is made up of a material that's designed to wick moisture away from your foot so that not just when they get wet, but when you begin to perspire, it uh, wicks that moisture away from your foot so that uh, it prevents uh, blisters. Uh, when your foot gets really wet and your sock gets uh, uh, wet, it can lose its shape and, and uh, cause blisters. Now, real, uh, since I'm on that topic, we'll talk about socks a little bit because that's almost as important as the shoe. Uh, you want to avoid cotton socks uh, because cotton will lose its form a lot quicker and it is not designed to wick moisture away from your foot. So to uh, uh, work with your running shoes to wick moisture away from your foot, you'll want to make sure you have a good technical sock that's designed. So you'll want to make sure that you uh, not only have uh, the right shoe for you, but make sure that you have a, uh, a good sock that works for you. I mean, there's lots of different types of socks. Some people like thicker socks, thinner socks, and you can get a technical sock that meets all those things, even uh, with the uh, ones that uh, uh, have individual toes for you to stick them in. And uh, that people that have uh, blister issues, a lot of times those socks uh, work uh, best for them. Okay, so you'll want to find the right shoe for you. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, towards the end about, uh, uh, you know, how you, who has the final word uh, in uh, what's the right shoe for you. Uh, and, but I'm going to talk about that uh, toward the end. And um, so now, as far as uh, hiking boots uh, versus uh, trail shoe, um, you can get uh, trail shoes. I know Hoka and, and others will make... Uh, a, a, a sort of higher top shoes that will will give you a little bit more ankle support that a hiking boot uh, like a hiking boot does so uh, just because you go with a trail shoe doesn't necessarily uh, mean you can't get something to give you a, a little support to your your uh, ankles uh, which is a lot of people are con concerned about so um, all right while we're on the topic of buying shoes <laughs> let me say something that I could never say when I was working at the running store. And that is, don't be this person. I can't tell you how many times I would uh, work with uh, someone. They'd tell me about all their, their issues with their feet and I'd scan their foot on the computer and take a look at them walk and hone in on exactly what shoes right for them. They'd try some on and Eventually, we'd put one on their foot, and, and, and they'd say, oh, yeah, that feels great. That feels terrific. And I'd say, great. Uh, you know, let's, let's ring it up. And they would say, yeah, that feels good. But you know what I really want? I want that pink one. Okay, don't be that person. <laughs> if you want that pink one you walk, when you walk in, you know, just buy it. Or go to Walmart and grab something off the shelf and get it. But don't take the person's time who really knows what the right shoe for you is and then completely disregard what they're saying. If there's, if you just want something for the, because that's the style. Now, that's something I uh, could never say when I was working uh, at the running store because you know the old saying the customer is uh, always right but you know what I can say it now and so don't be that customer if you want the pink shoes great go get the pink shoes if you just gotta be wearing Nikes great just go where buy the Nikes wherever you want to buy them but like I said don't bring them back the next day saying we put you in the wrong shoe let's talk about we've talked about blisters let's talk about another big uh, problem for uh, especially runners, but uh, anybody <laughs> on their feet, uh, and that is uh, plantar fasciitis. And uh, I think I'm going to uh, uh, finish my hike and then continue uh, this video to uh, talk about plantar fasciitis a little bit. Okay, 
so uh, now let's uh, talk about plantar fasciitis. And uh, first of all, what is plantar fasciitis? Well, plantar fasciitis is um, starts with this uh, tendon that runs all the way down the length of your your foot, and um, and basically, it's when uh, that tendon uh, gets a little rip or tear in it, and uh, usually it will uh, that will start right at the heel of the of the foot. So um, if uh, somebody would come into uh, the running shop and complain about the pain in their heel, you know, um, that would be um, the first thing that I would uh, tend to think of is that you know this might be plantar fasciitis. It could be other things, but it might be plantar fasciitis. But it will usually start to tear right at the heel. Now, not always. Sometimes the, the people will feel the pain up uh, more into their arch and, and other areas along their foot. But generally speaking, I, at least nine times out of ten, I think people are going to feel it uh, in their foot. So it's that it's that tear. Now, uh, I personally have actually had uh, plantar fasciitis on a couple of, of, of occasions. Uh, and, and let me tell you, it's, it's no fun. And uh, especially the first time I had it because I didn't really know uh, what it was. I uh, uh, was... Uh, been uh, over 20 years ago since I first got it, and uh, it um, was when I first started running uh, kind of seriously, and uh, I was training kind of hard. It was uh, about a, a year into when I first started running seriously, and I actually thought I had done something to bruise the heel of my foot, and it was really tender, and I couldn't fig figure it out, and I was because I, I didn't know what plantar fasciitis was, and and actually, eventually, I figured out that if I took some tape, and I just took like some regular masking tape, it wasn't even medical tape, and wrapped it around uh, around my foot like that, and and that's what sort of stabilized that uh, the uh, that, that tendon and, and and held it in place a little bit better, uh, and and I noticed that oh yeah, that feels a whole lot better now, and I can I can run it on, on it uh, without as much uh, pain, and so I started doing that, but I didn't really know what I was doing. And uh, ultimately, what I did, what by the way I was taping it up incorrectly, uh, I ended up causing a stress fracture. So uh, I ended up uh, losing uh, even uh, more time uh, from uh, my running. But um, taping it is good, but you want to use the right kind of tape, and, and, and specifically something called a KT tape. And um, you'll you'll want to uh, buy some of that. It costs about twenty dollars a roll of it, uh, and. Um, uh, you'll, want, you'll need to go to their website and uh, look up uh, the directions. They will have videos on there that will show you exactly how to tape up uh, plantar fasciitis. KT tape is good for lots of, of injuries, and so, uh, but especially plantar fasciitis. And I have used it uh, the second time I got plantar fasciitis. I ended up using that, and, and it, uh, yeah. it uh, In addition to uh, taping, there are some other things that you can do if you're wanting to uh, treat your plantar fasciitis. Uh, and uh, one of those, uh, the next thing that I would do, uh, in addition to the KT tape, the KT tape is not as convenient as these other things that I'm gonna, gonna mention, uh, because it does take some effort. And in fact, if you have a friend to help you, uh, go to uh, their, their website and look at the video and then a friend to actually help you apply the tape, it makes it a lot easier. Although I have applied it to myself, so it can be done. Uh, but there's even socks that you can get that, that slide on, and that's a whole lot easier than putting it on the tape. Not as effective, however, uh, and, um, but you can do that. Uh, those socks, they're, they're not the, you know, a good, a good technical running sock is, is, is kind of expensive anyway if you're not used to buying them. Uh, uh, but uh, you can expect to pay about $50 for like a sock that's specifically uh, designed for plantar fasciitis. So that's another thing. Not necessarily the, the, the thing I would recommend. It wouldn't hurt, but it's not what I'd recommend. If, if I wanted to, to do something that was a little bit easier uh, than the KT tape, or maybe in addition to the KT tape, uh, it would be an insole for your shoe. Now, just like shoes, there's lots of different types of insoles because there's lots of different types of feet out there. Uh, so you need to find out what uh, kind of foot you, you have. Now, if you good, go to a good, reputable uh, running store where they sell good running shoes, which includes uh, trail shoes, um, they, uh, the, per the people there should be able to uh, do a good job of recommending a, uh, uh, a, the, the correct insole for you. Now, just like the shoes, you want to try them on. You can uh, see what that insole feels like up underneath your foot and uh, make, make sure that it's hitting your arch in the right place. And um, 
uh, and then uh, find, find the best one that way. So uh, go to a good, reputable place. I, I suspect, although I've never uh, bought footwear uh, at REI, I, I've, I've picked up like some, some gear there, but I've never bought footwear there. But I, I, um, from what I've seen uh, back where they're, where they're selling their, their shoes, it seems like the people back there uh, know what they're doing, and I think they're trained fairly well. But even if you go into a reputable running store, you know, uh, you might want to just get to know the people there uh, a little bit. Uh, find out who's been working there for a long time and, 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 and quickly. Because occasionally, you know, they'll hire a new employee and they're still learning things. Uh, and so uh, you, you want to make sure that you, uh, you get some, some, you know, talk to the person who really knows best uh, about those insoles. But an insole will help. Now, I never wore insoles in my running shoes. I'm probably going to get a pair just to wear while I'm hiking. Uh, and in fact, um, I used to um, wear insoles in just my regular everyday dress shoes uh, at work because if I were going to be on my feet all day long, that extra support up under your arch really makes a big difference when it comes to fatigue. And for a hiker that's hiking several miles for several more hours, uh, that uh, can help out uh, quite a bit. Even if you don't have plantar fasciitis, it will help out with the wear uh, and tear on your feet and, and, and they'll feel a whole lot better. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the insoles uh, can, can be helpful and uh, so uh, another uh, thing to do once you get plantar fasciitis in order to treat it, you know what, before I go on, uh, make, let me make this disclaimer. Uh, I am not a doctor, <laughs> okay, uh, and I don't even play one on TV. <laughs> uh, uh, for that matter, I, I'm not a, a real through hiker, uh, but I am playing one on YouTube. Uh, so, um, yeah, you'll want to cons uh, consult your doctor, uh, your uh, podiatrist, if, you, if you've gone to a podiatrist. I will t I'll talk more about podiatrists in, in a minute here and, and their expertise. Um, but um, yeah, those are things that you can do to help uh, uh, make your uh, foot feel better uh, while you're out uh, walking, hiking, or, or running uh, while you're um, recovering from plantar fasciitis. Um, an another thing that you can do, in fact, in my previous video when I was talking about the you know the stuff that I'm, I'm going to be packing, uh, and I had a little green ball that had these little nubs on it, uh, that's a really good thing. Uh, uh, for treating it too. The nubs, especially because uh, with those nubs, uh, supposedly that, that helps uh, improve the blood flow uh, even better. So, uh, but you want something kind of firm and then you just uh, roll it along the bottom of your, of your foot. You can put it on the ground and roll your foot around and massage your foot that way. And getting that blood flow is going to help uh, treat uh, your plantar fasciitis. Uh, and um, if you've got a podiatrist or just your regular doctor, they, they should be telling you this as well. And they'll probably tell you to um, ice it as often as you can for, you know, like about 20 minutes of a time at a time. Icing and massaging is good to, uh, to do it for about 20 minutes and then give it a break. And, but do it that as many times a day as you can, actually. And that's going to help you, um, your foot uh, heal itself uh, from the plantar fasciitis. Uh, and then, of course, rest. And that's the, the part that, especially runners, uh, really hate. Uh, runners hate taking time off of their, out of their, their uh, training schedule because they feel like they're going to be losing uh, fitness and things like that. So, um, but you, you know, uh, you might want to take at least a day or two off uh, once you first get it and, 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 and just treat it. Um, but uh, uh, massaging, icing, resting, and uh, those sorts of things. Now, uh, that's how you treat it. And uh, I've already gone over what you can do while you have it uh, to, to, to make it less painful. Now, the old saying, you know, uh, prevention <laughs> is the best medicine. And the way to prevent it, because it's caused by that tendon ripping, so that just means it gets tight. So the way to treat that, actually, is um, to make sure that you're, you're doing your stretching. And a lot of runners like me, we hate doing that. I, I don't like doing that, and that's probably why I've gotten it in, in the first place, because I don't really stretch enough, enough. So the best way to prevent that is make sure that you're stretching. So let me uh, sort of demonstrate uh, the proper way to, to do some stretching for that. Let's um, move this out and move this out of the way. And what you can do is you just come over to a wall like this. Okay, and you want to just... Uh, Put your foot up against the wall, your toes up against the wall like that, your heel on the ground, and then just gradually lean into it. Now, you're first probably going to feel the tension and the stretching in your calf. That's probably where you'll feel it first, and then, you know, maybe even in your hamstring like this. But what you want to do is, is hold it there. Don't just do it for a few seconds and say, good, and then do the other foot, and then go going back and forth like that. What you want to do is hold it there as long as it takes. 
And uh, what you can, what I do, and it, it might take a minute or two, uh, but get it in there and stretch out as much as you can. You'll feel it in your calf for sure and in your hamstring. And then eventually you'll feel everything sort of start to relax. And that's when you can sort of feel feel that tendon in your foot start to relax a little bit. So hold it as long as it takes until you can just sort of feel that relaxation uh, uh, in there, okay? So, uh, and that's the best way to, to stretch, um, you know, that tendon itself. Now, it's not uh, just that tendon, the tightness in that tendon that causes it too. You'll want to do uh, lots of stretching in your legs, especially stretching that will stretch out your hamstring and your calf. Because when that gets tight, this all this stuff is really kind of connected. And when it gets tight in your calf and your hamstring, that will uh, affect it as well. So good stretching really is uh, the key to um, the, the key to prevention of uh, plantar fasciitis. So you've been uh, to your family doctor maybe about your, your feet or maybe even uh, a podiatrist about your feet. Uh, you've come into, maybe you came into my store and, and uh, somebody put you uh, on the uh, machine and did a 3D um, imaging of your, of your feet and, and saw what the software uh, recommended. And uh, maybe uh, somebody looked at you walk and took a look at your biomechanics and they had ideas about the the uh, the best uh, shoe for your foot and what you should be doing, whether or not you need an insole, uh, all of that stuff. You've gotten all this input and the bottom line is, you know, who do you rely on? You know, what what should be your your ultimate reference? Uh, who's right? Is it your your family doctor? Is it your podiatrist? Is it, is it the computer imaging? Uh, is it uh, the... Uh, uh, person uh, in the store taking a look at you, you walk and all that, um, who should have the final say? Well, none of them. My advice to you is to listen to your feet. Take in all of that information and uh, try the shoes that they're recommending. The odds are if, uh, if the, um, they do a good scan of your foot on the machine and you've got a, a good podiatrist who really knows uh, about uh, running shoes and trail shoes, uh, and the uh, person uh, in the uh, store that you've been been talking to is is a, is a veteran and has fit lots of people and knows what they're talking about. Odds are there's not going to be a lot of disagreement. But the bottom line is, it's your feet. When you put on those shoes, when you try on those insoles, whatever it is you're you're doing, your feet will tell you if it's right. And really, it's it pretty much as simple as comfort. If it feels good, do it so to speak. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I, um, my advice is uh, to not necessarily take my advice, although uh, it's, there's lots of years uh, experience behind it and the computers are pretty doggone good at about uh, assessing your foot and hopefully you've gone to a, 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 a doctor who actually knows a little bit uh, something uh, about shoes uh, in addition to your feet and, um, and hopefully everybody will pretty much, should be pretty much in line with at least the type of shoe that you should be in and um so but the bottom line is even i usually will will uh if i've i've narrowed it down i mean there's hundreds of different shoes out there and uh, i will usually narrow it down to two or three uh but you know which one of those two or three listen to your feet they're the ones that will not steer you wrong so yeah, that's what I have to say about plantar fasciitis, and that's probably, especially among runners and, and anybody that's uh, you know um, using their uh, you know hiking long distances and things like that. Probably the most common foot injury, uh, next to maybe blisters. Uh, so, uh, but there are other uh, foot injuries, in, including blisters, and uh, maybe in a future video uh, I will uh, address those as well. So uh, this is, as I said earlier, this is a topic that I actually know uh, something about. So um, uh, in the meantime, uh, happy trails.